Welcome back, welcome back. Here is a lesson for the castle jig. Now this is going to go together with Tom Billy's, which we just taught recently. It's in A minor, and the Danon play these two together. So I'm going to create play along tracks on Patreon for Tom Billy's straight into the castle jig. Before we get started, a big shout out to all my patrons. Thank you for sticking with me and making all of this content possible. So here we go. This is what we're aiming for. Not going to do too fast, but it will have plenty of interesting things in it. Access to all of the notation PDFs, scrolling notation tab, ABCs, the whole shebang, and the full archive of all 75 lessons that are currently available, head on over to Patreon. The link is in the description. All right, the castle jig. I learned this from the playing of Dedanon. It's in the key of A minor. It is yet another tune that I love to play with a low A string. So the G just tuned up one tone to A. You can do it, you can tune it back down, it's not a big deal. You can also play this tune exactly the way that I play it, with the G as a G, and using the low A where it normally is on fret two. You don't need to change anything, but I love it because you got the big growly low A on the bottom. A personal preference. It's worth experimenting with to see if you like it. And like I said, you can always tune it back down. Now, similar to Tom Billy's jig, which we just did recently, the second part can involve a little bit of positional switches to make things easier. So here it is. So it goes straight up to the high B on an arpeggio. Now, like I said, if you're well able to play with your pinky, don't stop now. And if you're in between can I and can't I, then I suggest do, because it'll strengthen it. I always switch. I've been switching for a long time. That's a skill in itself, being able to positionally switch. So it's not a bad thing to be able to do it. There's plenty of opportunity in this because it's an A minor. It has an open E, which allows time for the switching. And right at the start, the arpeggio. That high A is your next grounded note, so you can switch on the open E. Another open E for switching back. phrase and you have an E and a D so open E and a fret 5 in the A string and that's your opportunity to get your index finger ready for fret 3 in the E for the G and there's your switch switching again on the open E so that's your left hand fingering for the second part. If you've done a few of these before, it gets easier. And like I said, if you can do it with your pinky and the correct fingering, better again, go for it. The very slow version of this, the simple tune, that'll be on Patreon. Go ahead and learn it, then come back 
And here's the one we're going to do slowly but with ornamentation. And afterwards I'm going to talk about triplets on the different strings because sometimes on the fatter, lower register ones it can be a little bit more difficult. And I have a couple of ideas on how to get around that. So here we go, castle jig, nice and handy ornaments. Let's talk about triplets and angle of attack to the string. So here's the deal. I get a lot of feedback from folks that I work with one-to-one -one on my one-to-one -one feedback tier, oddly enough, that they find it more difficult to triplet on the heavier G and D strings that they do on the thinner, lighter E and A. Part of it is down to string tension that these just seem to be a little more tense than the heavier strings and so there is a little bit of string kind of bounce back on the on the floppier strings. So one of the things to consider when we bring our hand in contact with the banjo our our wrist or our forearm rather is making contact with the tailpiece and our physical hand this part is making contact with the banjo behind the bridge. So two points of contact and then there's a sort of a pivoting motion or a supported wrist action that happens. If you can see it here, I hope you can, the angle that the, that the pick meets the string changes across the four strings if my hand is in the one position. So down here, it is at a slightly different angle. This is almost the trajectory, slightly exaggerated, of the pick as it travels across all four strings. The effect of that is that when we're doing triplets on the E string and the A string, we have, in effect, an angle of the pick to the strings that is more obtuse. No, it's more acute. <laughs> is it? I don't know. Ah, Here's a perpendicular. So the pick is now straight on with the strings. And here we're going to increase the angle. So when we're picking on the E string, that's often what's happening is that we have this rather acute angle. But because that position of the hand when we come onto the, these lower register notes, that angle is gone and we have almost a straight thumb in line with, with, the, with the string. So if you are finding that it's more difficult to triplet on those heavier strings, one of the things you can do is just slightly move your hand as you come up onto those strings to continue to have this angle of pick contact with the string so that it's not fully perpendicular. Fully perpendicular, the string has to move further back and over so there's more movement and it does and, and it has more bounce back of the string. Whereas coming at an angle like this, there's less bounce back, there's more rigidity to the pick giving you a little bit more power as you go across the string. I hope that makes sense. What it means in real terms is that as we move onto these strings and are doing triplets on these, we can move the hand ever so slightly. Play 
around with that, experiment. Is Does it make it easier for you to do the triplets on those heavier strings or are you absolutely fine? If you watch a lot of bluegrass guitar pickers, their hand moves quite a bit as they transition across all six strings and particularly when they get onto the heavier strings. It's just physically more effort to work the pick back and over a heavier, floppier string. So try it out and see. Here's the castle jig again, this time with more pace, more ornamentation. So we're really gonna add in a lot of fun stuff in this time. Alright, so there's a lot going on there. Triplets, or chromatic triplets, single note triplets, a couple of slides and hammer-ons. Let's just have a look at chords. So it's in A minor and largely having the low A on the bottom is going to get you out of a lot of things. The second part is an opportunity to play a D modal chord. And it's a sort of a tension creator. Uh, the Bothy band used to use this a lot. And when it resolves back to the A minor, there's that sense of relief. And at one point, we're going to use an F natural chord. That might be something else, because it's relative to the key of A minor. But it's... <laughs> F and C. And putting an E minor with it. These are a little outside the box. They won't suit everybody, and that's absolutely fine. So here we go. Slowing it down a little bit, leaving out some of the busier ornaments and focusing on the chords. throw a little bit of everything in and probably some variations as well. Uh, hopefully nothing too wild, we'll kind of see what happens.
a short, quick lesson, I think, for the castle jig, a number of different variations of it, from simple ornamentation, chords, ornamentation and chords, and then a whole load of bells and whistles. Definitely challenging. Easier, I find, with the A string tuned up, or the G tuned up to A, but not necessary, not necessary at all. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. On Patreon, you will find some play-along tracks for Tom Billy's Into the Castle Jig. The two go really well together. To Dannon did them. Who am I to argue? Hope you've enjoyed this lesson. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button.